All right, welcome back to the Ultimate Mixdown. In this video, I wanted to show you a quick tutorial on how to set up project templates so that when you want to create a new project, you don't have to waste time adding a bunch of new tracks, effects, sends, routing, selecting the inputs for those instruments. You have everything ready to go at your fingertips right at the start of the project. So let's dive right in. Now what I have here is a completely blank slate, so a brand new session. And I'm going to add on tracks, I'm going to set up effects, inserts, I'm going to select my inputs for devices like my audio interface and my MIDI keyboard. And I'm going to have that all ready to go so that anytime I want to create a new project, I can get right into the recording and the creativity of that project and spend less time setting it up. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to create all of my tracks. I like to start from the bottom up, so I'll start with the drums. Now I typically use an electronic drum plugin like Easy Drummer. I sometimes use samplers along with sequencers for different types of beats. Whatever the case is, we're going to set this up so that you can use this setup, whether it's acoustic drums, electronic drums, you'll be ready to go. So the first thing you want to do is create an overall drum bus. And it's just as simple as creating another track in Reaper. So you just double click the track control panel and you give it a name. Call it drums. We'll disarm the track since this is just going to be a bus. So I'm going to add all of my drums and then I'm going to organize it the way I like to, which is from the bottom up. So let's just go ahead and start adding drums. And then with a lot of electronic drum software like Easy Drummer, you'll have certain effects that you can export out to. So I'll add those effects here. We might not use them, especially if we're using an acoustic kit or if we're using a different type of software, but it's good to have just in case. And once I have all of my drum tracks set up, now I can select all of them, again clicking the first one, holding the shift key, and then clicking the last one. And then I can click and drag these into the drum bus track, and then Reaper will actually indent these tracks under this drums track, and now we can effectively use this drum track as a bus to manipulate all of the individual tracks at the same time. So if we want to increase or decrease the volume of all the drums, we can use the volume slider. If we want to change the panning of all the drums, we can use the panning. You can also mute and solo all of the drums just by clicking these buttons. So it's very useful in the mixing process to have these organized this way. Now if we're using some type of MIDI track for our drums, we're going to want to create that MIDI track. We'll keep it separate outside of the drum bus so that it's not being affected with what we're doing on the mixing of these drums. So I'll just head, um, you can either do Easy Drummer if you're using Easy Drummer. And if you're not using Easy Drummer and you just want to have a MIDI drum track, you can just have a MIDI drum track. And what you'll do here is on the Easy Drummer track, I would put Easy Drummer. And on the MIDI drum track, I would put whatever sequencer and sampler that I'm going to use for my drums here. Have that all ready to go. And if I decide to use them, I'll make sure the routing is set up so that those drums get fed into these individual drum tracks. And then we can mix these together as we get further in the process. We're not going to get into the routing of the drums in this video. I'll show you some simple routing setup. But if you're interested in how to route Easy Drummer or other types of drum software to the individual drum tracks themselves as audio sources, I have a separate video on how to do that, and I'll put a link in the description below. One great thing about the organization in Reaper is you can just select this arrow, and it'll reduce the size of those tracks so you have it nice and organized and you don't have it cluttering up your session. And once we have the drums down, we're going to go ahead with the rest of the instruments in our template. So I want to have this as a full musical composition template for the type of music that I use. It might be different depending on the style that you're working with. It might be different depending on who you're working with or how many instruments there are. But this is what I like to use, and this is a way to get me up and running quickly. The next thing I would do is add a bass track. So same way, double click the track control panel, give it a name. I'm just going to use one bass track. I'll put all of my effects on this track, so I don't need any type of routing or anything for the bass. So this is good to go as is for me. And then we're going to go into the guitars. So for guitars, I like to have at least two, maybe even four rhythm guitars. And then I also like to have at least two, and then up to four lead guitars as well. So let's add our guitars track. And then I'm going to go and add my two rhythm guitars. And then I'm going to add my two leads as well. We'll take off the record arm, and then with all of these tracks, we're going to select them. We're going to click and drag to the guitars track, and then again, it indents it. It adds it into the organization where this track is now manipulating all of these tracks together. And then we can also reduce the size again, clicking the arrow. 
and that just keeps it nice and organized. Now, one thing I wanted to point out, you might've noticed that my tracks are automatically color coded when I enter the track name into the title. I have a separate video on that using SWS extensions to auto color code your tracks. If you're interested in that, check out the video below. And then the next thing I wanna do is add in my virtual pianos and my virtual synths. So I'm gonna group those all together. So I'll just create one synth track. And then I like to have a couple of synths and a couple of pianos ready to go. So I'm gonna set up two synths. And then I like to add a couple of pianos as well. Okay. And then now that we have our synths and our pianos, let's get rid of the record arm again. We'll select them all and we'll drag them right into the synths and reduce the size. Bring this to the top. And now we have everything but the vocals. So the last thing I want to do is add in the vocals where I have at least two lead vocals, two double vocals, and then four backing or harmony vocals. So I'll create my vocals track. And then here I'm also going to have sub organization for the vocals. So I'm going to have my leads going to a lead bus and I'm going to have my harmonies going to a harmony bus. And that just helps in the mixing process so that I'm not affecting all of my vocals the same because they're not all treated the same. So let's go ahead and do lead vocals. Okay, and I'll do lead vox one and lead vox two. All right, and the way that I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna take these two lead vocal tracks. This is where I'm gonna record my audio. I'm gonna click and drag these into the lead vocal sub bus. And then I'm gonna take this lead vocals and I'm gonna click and drag that into the vocal. So now my audio tracks for my vocals will be fed into a submix, and then that will be fed into the submix for the vocals. So let's do the same thing for doubles and harmonies. Okay, and then we'll take the record arm off of all of these. And then let's bring our individual tracks into their submixes. Then we'll take these and we'll bring them into the vocals track. So now you can see we have three levels here. We have the overall vocals, and then we have our double vox, harmonies, and lead vocals. And then from there, we have our individual tracks that we're actually recording our audio onto. And then we can minimize these as well for even more organization. Okay, and now we can drag this to the top, and we'll have our vocals sitting right up top. So that's all the tracks set up for our template. And that took a lot of time. So you can see why you want to use a template instead of having to do this for every single project that you're working on. So once we have the tracks all set up, the next thing we want to do is have it automatically select our inputs. So instead of having to go into every single track and selecting input one on my audio interface or selecting my MIDI keyboard input for my synths, I want to have that all ready to go. So let's go into our individual tracks and you can actually set the input for multiple tracks just by clicking and then shift clicking and then selecting the input. So for all of my vocals, they're going to be coming in on input one, which is the default, but let's go ahead and do that anyway. So we just want to make sure are these on input one? They are. So we're good to go. Now, the only thing I want to point out is we're going to be recording down here on our individual tracks, not on our submix tracks. Okay, so for synths and keys, we'll just shift and select through all of those, and then we're gonna select the input of our MIDI controller or our MIDI piano. So I'll click input, I'll go to input MIDI, and I have my Korg R3 plugged in and turned on, and then I'll select all channels. So now if you look at all of these synths tracks, they should be set to that Korg MIDI device. And then if I record ARM any one of these, you should see that there's an input signal coming in. You're not going to hear anything yet because we haven't added our synths or our pianos to these tracks. So right now it's not playing anything virtually, but you can see the input signal coming in. So for guitars and bass, I'm going to select input two. I'll have my direct line input on input two, which are where these electric guitars and bass are going to be coming in. So I'm going to go to input mono input two, and then all of these should be set to input two. And then the same thing with the bass. Now for drums, as I mentioned earlier, what's going to happen is we're either going to record our drum MIDI with the Easy Drummer plugin, or we're going to record it with a sequencer and sampler. And we're going to have those sounds coming from these tracks. The MIDI is going to trigger the audio, and then the audio is going to get captured onto these audio tracks. 
And that pretty much sums up the inputs of these. Now, a few other things we need to do. We want to add some inserts, especially for anything that involves typical effects like EQs and compression on a lot of our audio sources, we'll have those. And then for anything that uses a virtual instrument, we want to have that set up and ready to go as well. And before I go any further, I'm going to add effects tracks too. So I want a vocal reverb and a vocal delay. And I might even do two of these depending on the project. So it might not be a bad idea to set up two for each of those. And then guitars, I might have a guitar reverb, a guitar delay, and then I'll add a drum reverb as well. And then with this, what we can do is we can click on our insert for the effect. We can pull up a reverb and we'll just add Tal reverb onto this. And then you can dial it in as you would like your vocal reverb to be. And then what's gonna happen is you can record onto your vocal track, send it to the reverb track, and it's already there. So all you have to do is some minimal dialing in to make sure it sounds just right in your mix. Delay, same thing. So we'll click insert, we'll search for delay, rea delay. So this comes with Reaper. And then you can dial this in as necessary too. And you can do the same thing for the reverbs and delays for the guitar and the drums. And then all of your inserts will be set up and ready to go. Again, just with minimal tweaks where you need to adjust them when you're working with your projects. And now for our drums, in this case, I want to use a sampler and sequencer. So I'll insert and I'll do Sitala. And I'll use this as my sampler. And it comes with a preloaded kick, but you can also change out the instruments or the kicks or drums or hits or whatever they are in the sampler. And I have another video on that. I'll put that in the link below as well. And then I'll also add a sequencer here so that I can build out a pattern in the sequencer and it'll trigger my drums. So let's go with the Mega Baby sequencer. And then that should come before the sampler so that it triggers the sampler. You could even have a basic pattern already set up and ready to go in the sequencer that you could build off of. And then for Easy Drummer, we would just have Easy Drummer here. So this is not a free plugin, but is a very useful one to adding drums, especially for things like rock or punk music or metal. Okay, so we have all of these inserts ready. And then let's go to some audio. And we know that we want to have certain audio effects on things like our vocals. So we can go into the vocal track, click on insert, and we can add compression. Because we're most likely going to compress every vocal that comes in. Okay, we'll just select a compressor on that. You can dial it in as you typically would like to use your compressor. Then we can also go into the effects chain here and we can add an EQ too, because we're most likely gonna EQ all of our vocals as well. So we have a compressor and an EQ. And then I can copy an effects chain from one track to another just by clicking here and dragging the inserts to the second track. And now both of these tracks have the same two plugins. And then I could do the same thing across all of my vocal tracks. The last thing I want to talk about is something like routing the tracks to effects tracks or effects buses. So if you know you're going to use something like a reverb on vocals in the majority of your projects, then you can have that all set up and ready in advance. So what we can do is we can take our reverb effect and bring it up here just so we can see it. And then we can route our vocals by clicking the routing and dragging it to the routing on the reverb effect. And then that creates the routing from the vocals to the reverb. And then you can adjust just how much you want going to that reverb just by adjusting the slider here. Now, one thing to point out is if you right click, they still go to the master fader, both of these tracks, which is, which is what you want in the case of an effects track. So you're going to have your dry vocals here, and then you're going to have your reverb vocals here. You can dial in just how much reverb you want in your reverb plugin. You can increase or reduce the amount of reverb using the volume slider on this track to mix it well and have it blend well with the rest of your mix. Um, but just keep that in mind when you're routing, it still keeps the master send. If you're routing anything to another track where you don't want it to also go to the master. So let me show you an example of this real quick from Easy Drummer. Right now with the Easy Drummer plugin here, I'll record the MIDI, but the MIDI will play back through the Easy Drummer software on this track. So if I'm routing my drums from my Easy Drummer track to the individual drum tracks, then essentially we're gonna have Easy Drummer playing those drums, and then we're gonna have each of these tracks playing those drums as well. What I'm gonna to wanna to do is right click on this plugin and click the master send, and that'll uncheck it, meaning that it won't send the audio from this track to the master send. 
and then you'll only hear the audio coming from these tracks. And that's great because we can dial in each of the drums and the effects on those drums individually and not have to rely on the Easy Drummer software to do that type of mixing. And the last thing we want to do in a project template and in any session, regardless of the software that you're using, you should create a sub mix. This really helps you keep your levels before hitting the master fader. If you're working on your projects and you're starting to mix and you're starting to add plugins and effects, we also want to have a sub mix so that we have one last resort to bring that volume level down a little bit just in case we're getting a little too hot right before going into the master fader. And then on top of that, we could also add a little EQ and compression to that sub mix, kind of glue all the tracks together in the song. So we'll just add our sub mix, double click, sub mix, get off the record arm, bring it to the top, select all of our tracks, and click and drag, and then all of our tracks are now feeding into that sub mix before going to the master fader. Okay, now you can see why it's so important to have a project template. Now that we have our template all ready to go, we wanna save it as a project template so that we can use it anytime we create a new project. So to do that, go to File, Project Templates, Save Project as Template, and then this is gonna open up right in your Project Templates folder, and then I'll save this as Full Project Template. But you can save it whatever you want. And once we save our project as a template, we can go to File, Project Templates, and then select our template, and this will create a new session or a new project that when we click save, you'll see has our template here, and everything is set up and ready to go. You can actually set it as the template to be used anytime you create a new project, and you can do that by going to Reaper Preferences or Command Comma or Control Comma on a PC, and then you go to Project, and then under When Creating New Projects, use the following project file as a template. We'll click the Browse button, It'll bring us to our project templates folder and we can select the full project template here. And then we're gonna click apply and then okay. So now if I go file new project and I give it a name, it's gonna create a new project and it's gonna use that project template. So you can fly right through your sessions, you can keep the creativity going and this overall will just make things so much simpler and easier and faster. If you enjoyed the tips in this video, hit the like button. Be sure to subscribe for more videos like this. If you're interested in learning more about mixing, be sure to check out my 7 Steps to a Pro Level Mix. I'm going to put that in the link below as well. Thank you again for joining, and I hope to see you all in the next video.